Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, I'm going to tell you a story of a time when the government in New Jersey, specifically um, Department of Weights and Measures, went to one of my business locations and left my manager there with almost $20,000 in fines. And this guy calls me in panic. He has no idea what to do. And the fines were because, for those of you that aren't aware, I have a business called The Gold Trader. And what I do is I buy and sell precious metals. I also custom create um, certain jewelry pieces. I don't offer that to everybody. I really don't have the time to do. Uh, but I also specialize in the purchase and sale of diamonds. I worked uh, as a diamond dealer prior, as a diamond setter, as a manufacturer, polisher, all different aspects of this industry. But that's what I do. And this was in another location that I had years ago that is no longer um, where they gave me all these fines. And the reason why was because they said for every purchase that I make from the public of any precious metal in any form, you know, jewelry, bars, coins, anything, I am to write down certain things, which I have to by law. Um, the person's name, the person's address, um, the receipts have to be serialized in consequential number order, and we have to write down the price of gold or silver for that day, the weight and purity of what they have, the price total that you're paying them, and the breakdown of price per gram or whatever unit of measure you are using. All right? And then they have to sign it on the bottom that it's not stolen and all this shit. And you have to retain those receipts for a certain amount of years. Weights and Measures has the right to come in and ask to take a look at receipts whenever they want. They also have to verify that your scales are inspected and sealed and not tampered with in any way. All that's fine. These tickets were because they said that I had to take a photocopy of every single person's driver's license and give it to them. So every customer of mine, I'd have to ask for their license, walk back in my office, put it on the machine, get a copy, give it back, keep that license, and attach it to the receipt of purchase. So I've never done that, and I refuse to. All right. My general business philosophy is I would never do to someone or ask of someone what I don't want done or asked of me. And I don't want none of that shit. If I go to ShopRite, I'm here to buy whatever I'm here to buy. You don't need my fucking phone number. Don't even ask. I take offense to that. So likewise, I don't ask for my customers' information like that. I only do what I'm legally required to. Okay? So... I ended up fighting this case, started my research, did my work. Because I'm an LLC, um, by law, I'm not allowed to represent myself. I have to hire an attorney. Now, this was at the attorney general's level now of weights and measures, and the case was to be held in the state's capital of Trenton. Before the actual trial began, I requested permission of the court and the prosecution and weights and measures that I'd be able to represent myself. Okay, now when I did that, they said yes, and obviously thought, what a sucker I am. There's an old saying, even attorneys use, that any man who represents himself in court has a fool for a client. Guess what? I rep represented myself multiple times. I wish I had the videotapes of these things where I fucking humiliated these judges and prosecutors. So I'm the wrong motherfucker to assume that about. And I did this based in life in prison. And I did this on a lot of little bullshit stuff. In this case, they gave me permission. We began the actual trial. Okay? And they're threatening me, telling me I shouldn't do this. And I have to pay all these additional court fees and fines. When I lose, I'm going to be found guilty. We begin the trial, and immediately, within five minutes, the prosecutor and the representative from the Weights and Measures Office asked the judge to stop and told him that they no longer want to allow me to represent myself because they saw the direction this was going in, and they were panicked. The judge 
refuse them. He said, no, you already agreed to this. We're not rescheduling. We're not stopping. We're going to continue. Now, one thing to point out, before we got to this trial, okay, I spoke to these people in Trenton, and I tried to reason with them. I tried to be nice with them, and they were just talking like they always do to me, like they're superior, like they're big shots, like I'm a fucking peasant, and I should be thankful that they're even letting me breathe. And once I felt that, I remember talking to the head person there, and I told him, I said, okay. Let me, let me give you a piece of advice, friendly advice. When we see each other in trial, whenever the judge schedules this trial date for, do yourself a favor. Send your best. Whoever it is, however many you have, send your fucking absolute best. Most knowledgeable, most capable, because whoever you send there, I'm going to fucking embarrass. Don't send some young punk who just started out and doesn't know shit. Send the best. And I reminded him of that later in that trial day. So the basis of my argument was that I'll just tell you how I, how I presented it to the judge. So I had to ask the judge if he would allow me to submit into evidence the actual statute from the state that says what I'm supposed to do. Where they're saying, it says that I'm supposed to photocopy the driver's licenses and keep them and give them to them. So I had to actually read it on. I read the subcode. I read everything as it was. And they have to agree. Can we agree that this is from your own writings? This is yours. I had not changed it or altered it in any way. They agreed. Next, I pulled from the ABC. ABC is a bureau that controls the sale of alcohol, okay, alcoholic beverages within the state. Everyone has to be licensed through them. Um, I am criminally disqualified from ever owning a liquor license. However, years ago, it took me almost three years of fighting to get those rights restored. So I have that right restored. I'm allowed to own any liquor license, bars that I want, uh, where prior I wasn't. So anyway, I now submit as evidence and ask the court to accept this page from the ABC's guidelines that pertains to the sale of alcohol. And I read it, they agreed, and I told the judge the language in the two were exactly the same when it came to the photo IDs. It said that I am to verify the identification of the individual before completing the transaction. Verify. Nowhere does it say photocopy. Nowhere does it say uh, we take a picture of. Nothing like that. Verify. So once I was able to get the judge to accept on the record that these two were from the state's own laws okay, and regulations, and I didn't make them up, they wrote these. The prosecutor was objecting right away, saying, Your Honor, you know, the defendant is manipulating, you know, our wording in the statute, and he's trying to, you know, basically apply the law as he wants it to be and not as we intended it to be. And I said, whatever your intention was is of no concern to me. What you wrote and the actual wording is all I care about. At this point, they took a recess. They wanted to stop and take a break, okay? We go out into the hallway, and they're out there. These, there's a bunch of people from Attorney General Office and Weights and Measures, Prosecutor, uh, they're all there, and people from the judges' chamber. They want me to go on a speakerphone conference with one of these higher officials from the state's office, and all these people are out there with me. And I'm like, why the fuck would I do that? Whatever, go ahead, let's see. This clown gets on the phone, and he asks me, he says, why won't you just do what we want? I don't understand. Why don't you just do what we're asking of you? Everybody else does except you. Why don't you do this? And I said, listen, man, I don't even know who the fuck you are, okay? I have no idea who you are. I don't give a fuck what you want. Think how stupid you sound to me. I want a Lamborghini. Are you going to help me buy it? Do you give a fuck? 
if I expected you to buy it and told you you had to contribute to that, what would you think of me? You'd look at me like I'm an asshole. I look at you even worse. I don't give a fuck what you want. All right? That was the end of that part. Go fuck yourself. Let's go on and continue the trial. You go back in. They're objecting, objecting, trying to cancel it now, delay it, trying to argue that I need a lawyer. They know what's happening. And afterward, I'm in front of the judge again. Once the judge agreed that the language is all the same that I read onto the record, I asked him, Judge, in all your years on the bench, prior as an attorney, um, as, as a resident of the state, of the country, have you ever heard, even once, of any instance where a liquor store owner, okay, or a bartender had to take a photocopy of the person's driver's license before they sold them liquor? And he was very hesitant to answer, but he said, no. Boom. Based on that, I requested the case be dismissed. They dismissed it, threw away all the charges, everything. And it was a very big deal because I set case law in precedent where they were taking millions and millions of dollars from people in fines for doing something that wasn't even required of them. And I'm sure they're still doing it. And the judge actually told me that after. He said, Mr. Dial, you understand why the state is in such opposition to what you were doing here today, you understand? You've just taken away their ability to collect millions and millions of dollars a year. You've done that. So most people still don't know this. They still listen to whatever. I don't listen to any regulation unless it's exactly as it's written and I'm required to by law. And after leaving the court, I won. I see these guys out there, these agents from Weights and Measures. And I told them, I said, go back and tell your boss what I said. Go back and tell him that I warned him to send his best and that I would fucking humiliate them. And look at yourselves now. And then I asked one of them, can I assume now that you guys are going to start fucking with me and harassing me and being at my stores every day, hitting me up with fines and making shit up about me, trying to shut me down? He said, no, the opposite is true. None of us want anything to do with you. We don't want nothing to fucking do with you, and we're going to leave you alone. And ever since then, I've had a wonderful relationship with Weights and Measures, and I have changed the legal precedent with regard to them being able to find people and them forcing people to retain driver's license of customers. Uh, I always fight for the protection of my customers, and I would never reveal any information unless I was forced to by law. So I hope you guys got something good out of this. I'll talk to you next time. Thanks.